Hello, I'm so excited to share with you my newest design. It's a V-stitch mesh raglan style cardigan, which means there's no seams. I wanted to make something that was sporty I could wear through spring and summer, and so I added this cute little bomber style collar. And this stitch pattern works up so quickly, you want to make several of these in different colors. I used two balls of this cotton blend size 4 weight yarn, which comes to about 650 yards for a size small. And I'm starting out with a size K or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook, and I start with a slip knot and I chain 50. And when you reach the end of the chain, turn the chain over, and in the second chain from the hook, place a single crochet and single crochet in each chain to the end of the row. And so I thought I should insert here. Our project is worked from the top down, and these first few rows we are establishing the yoke of our cardigan, which sort of looks like a rounded square. And when you reach the end of the row, turn your work, and we will begin with the first corner increase. So we will begin with a chainless double crochet, which is a single crochet, turn it to the side, and in those two side loops, place another single crochet. And then also in the same stitch, Place another double crochet, chain one, and two more double crochets all in the same stitch. And now we will skip two stitches and in the next stitch, we will make a V-stitch, which is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all in the same stitch. And so now repeat three more times. So skip two stitches, V-stitch into the next stitch, and so you'll have a total of four V-stitches. And now skip two stitches and in the next stitch make another corner increase. And now skip two stitches and V stitch into the next stitch and repeat four more times for a total of five V-stitches along this section. And now skip two stitches and make another corner increase in the next stitch. And now skip two stitches, V-stitch into the next stitch four times for a total of four V-stitches along this section.
and we will be ending with skipping two stitches and a corner increase into the last stitch. And so for a recap, row two began with a corner increase and then there were four v-stitches, a corner increase, then five v-stitches, another corner increase, and then four v-stitches, ending with a corner increase. Row three will begin with two double crochets in the first stitch. and make another corner increase into the chain one space of the previous corner increase from the row before. And skip one stitch and double crochet in the next stitch. Next, we will V-stitch into the chain one space of the next V-stitch. And repeat until you get to the next corner increase. And now double crochet into that first stitch of the previous corner increase and then make another corner increase into the chain one space and double crochet into the last stitch of that same corner increase and now v-stitch into the chain one spaces of each v-stitch across this section and again double crochet into the first stitch of that next corner increase corner increase into the chain one space and then double crochet into the last stitch of that corner increase And now v-stitch into the next four v-stitches And now double crochet into the first stitch of that last corner increase. Make another corner increase into the chain one space. And end with two double crochets into the last stitch. Okay, so now we're at row four. We'll turn our work and we'll start with two double crochets in the first stitch. And one double crochet in the next stitch. And a corner increase into that chain one space.
And now skip two stitches and make a v-stitch into that next double crochet stitch. And now continue with your v-stitches worked into the previous row of v-stitches. And when you get to the next corner, you'll make another v-stitch in that double crochet that's before the corner increase and then make another corner increase in the chain one space and then make another v-stitch in that other double crochet just beyond the increase and repeat placing v-stitches in each v-stitch and then a v-stitch in that double crochet and a corner increase there and then a v-stitch in that double crochet and so just continue like this and I'll meet you at the end of the row so here we are at the end. We're going to make a V-stitch in that double crochet just before the corner increase and then we'll make a corner increase in that chain one space. And so now we'll skip two stitches and double crochet in the next stitch and end with two double crochets in the last stitch. And so for row five, we'll turn our work and place two double crochets in the first stitch and one double crochet in the next stitch and then a v-stitch in the next stitch and now double crochet in the first stitch of that corner increase and make a corner increase in the chain one space and double crochet in the last stitch of that corner increase and we will call this treatment of the corners an A increase row which was the double crochet in the first stitch of the increase and then a corner increase and then the double crochet in the last stitch of the increase and v-stitch in each v-stitch until you get to the next corner. And here you will do another A increase, which is a double crochet there, a corner increase there, and then another double crochet there. And repeat until you get to the end of the row. And you'll end with a v-stitch in the next double crochet and then double crochet in the next stitch and end with two double crochets in the last stitch In row six, we'll begin with two double crochets in the first stitch and one double crochet in the next stitch. And then V-stitch in the next stitch. and v-stitch in the next v-stitch
And now we will begin our row B increases, which is a V stitch in that double crochet that was just before the corner increase. And then make your corner increase in the chain one space. And V stitch in the double crochet that's just beyond the corner increase. And then continue with your V stitches in each V stitch and make your B increase in the next corner, which is a V stitch in that double crochet, your corner increase, and then a V stitch in the next double crochet. And repeat this process until you get to the end of the row. And you'll end this row with a V stitch in that last V stitch and a V stitch in the next stitch and one double crochet in the next stitch and two double crochets in the last stitch. And row seven begins with one double crochet in the first stitch And skip the next stitch and V stitch in the next stitch. And V stitch in each V stitch. And so this will be an A increase row. And so your corner increases will be the same as you did in row 5. And you'll end row 7 with a V stitch in that last V stitch, and then a V stitch in the next stitch, skip one stitch, and one double crochet in the last stitch. And row 8 begins with a double crochet in the first stitch and a V stitch in the next V stitch. And each of the next rows of the yoke will begin the same way. And so there will be no more front edge increases. And V stitch in each V stitch. And this is a B increase row. So your corners will be treated the same as you did in row 6. And here I have finished row 8 and then from now on the, the remaining rows of the yoke will begin the same as row 8 and also end the same way. Which is a double crochet in the first stitch and V stitch in each V stitch. And in the next few rows of the yoke your corner increases will alternate between the A increase rows and the B increase rows. And so your front and back and sleeve sections will continue to grow with each row of increases. And here I've reached row 10, which was a B increase row. And I measured my sleeve and it came to about 14 inches. And so I decided that's where I'd like to end my sleeve increases. So if you would like to do the same, the next row after your B increase row, you would just V stitch into the next V stitch and no longer do your A increase on that sleeve portion, but continue with your A and B increases on the front and back sections. And here I finished row 14 and the front and back portions were a B increase row and I measured across the front and it looks like it's about 18 inches across so I decided that's where I'd like to stop the increases. And if I double the 18 inches that gives me 36 inches around for the body when it's all connected. 
and so that gives me about four inches of ease around the bust measurement. And so to customize the yoke for your size, just continue with your A and B row increases until your back measurement reaches about half of what you would like your final circumference to be. And so my next row will begin with a double crochet in the first stitch and then V stitch in each stitch and then place one double crochet in the chain one space of your first corner, chain one, and one double crochet in the next chain one space of the next corner. And so you're skipping the entire sleeve section and continue with a V-stitch in each V-stitch across the back and then one double crochet in the next chain one space of the next corner, chain one, skip the next sleeve section and double crochet in the next chain one space of the next corner and v-stitch in each remaining v-stitch along the front section ending with one double crochet in the last stitch and so for the remaining rows of the body it's just one double crochet in the first stitch and a v-stitch in each v-stitch And when you get to the underarm, you just place a V-stitch in that chain one space. And continue adding as many rows as you'd like, keeping in mind that the ribbing we will add next adds another two inches. Now for the ribbing, I've switched to a smaller hook, a size J or six millimeter hook. And then chain eight. Turn your work and in the second chain, from the hook, place a single crochet and single crochet in each chain. You will then have seven single crochets. And now slip stitch into the next double crochet and also in the next chain one space. And now turn your work to the left without a turning chain, skip your two slip stitches and single crochet in the back loop of the next stitch and single crochet in the back loops across the end of this row. And now turn your work to the right without a turning chain and single crochet in the back loops in each stitch of this row. And repeat the process of slip stitching into the next two stitches. So remember the chain one spaces count as a stitch and then turn left and repeat. And when you've completed your ribbing, you can go ahead and finish off your yarn at that point. Now we will begin the first sleeve and I've placed two place markers at those two corners at the underarm. So beginning at the first place marker that's on the wrong side of the fabric, join your yarn with your size K hook in that chain one space. And chain one and single crochet and turn it to the side and place another single crochet in those two side loops so this will act as your first double crochet and then skip one stitch and double crochet in the next stitch and v-stitch in each v-stitch around and I'll meet you at the end of the row. And 
And so here is my last V stitch and then just double crochet in the next stitch and double crochet in the next chain one space. And then join to your first stitch with a slip stitch. And then chain two and turn. Skip one stitch and double crochet in the next stitch. And V stitch in each V stitch around the row and I'll meet you at the end. And here I'm making my last V stitch and then double crochet in the next stitch. Join to the top of your first stitch, chain two, and turn. And V stitch in each V stitch around this row, ending with a slip stitch at the top of the first V stitch. And so the next few rows will be a repeat of this row. And you'll see there's a gap at the underarm, but you can stitch that up with the tail later. And so continue adding rows to your sleeve, keeping in mind the final eight rows will be decreasing and here I am measuring what 8 rows is so I know when to begin my decrease. And then also allow 2 more inches for your cuff ribbing. And so now I'm about to begin my first sleeve decrease row. So I've chained 2, turned, and double crochet in the first stitch, skip the chain 1 space, and double crochet in the next stitch. And now V-stitch in each V-stitch around this row. And when you get to the last V-stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, skip the chain one space, and double crochet in the last stitch. join to the top of your first stitch, chain 2, and turn. And now for the second row of the sleeve decrease, we will begin with a double crochet, two together, over the first two stitches. So yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull through a loop, pull through the first two loops on your hook, Yarn over again, insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over again, and pull through all three loops on your hook. And now V-stitch in each V-stitch around this row, ending with a double crochet, two together, over the last two stitches. And then join to the top of your first double crochet two together. And chain two and turn. And 
and double crochet at the top of your double crochet two together from the previous row and v-stitch in each v-stitch ending with a double crochet in that last double crochet two together. And join with your first double crochet, chain two, and turn. And for the fourth row of the sleeve decrease, skip your first double crochet and V stitch in the next V stitch. And V stitch in each V stitch around, ending with a V stitch in the last V stitch and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first v-stitch. And so now you will complete the sleeve by repeating your last four rows. And when you've completed your last row, do not finish off because you will add your cuff ribbing in the same manner as previous. I used my size J hook and I chained 8 and I continued in the same way as I did with the previous ribbing and I joined the two completed ends of the cuff with a slip stitch row or you can stitch it with a needle and repeat these instructions for the other sleeve. And now we will work on the front edging and the collar. I had placed two stitch markers at the fullest part of the neck edge and I went ahead and completed two rows of single crochet evenly spaced along the left edge, leaving a long tail of a few yards so you can complete the last row of single crochet later. And at the other stitch marker I joined a fresh piece of yarn and then I also added two rows of single crochet along this edge and then continue with a row of half double crochet around the neck edge to the other stitch marker, turn and complete another row of half double crochet. And then I decided to do a third row of half double crochet, but I switched to an even smaller hook, a size I or five and a half millimeter hook. And then finish off that yarn, and then with your reserved yarn, go ahead and complete a row of single crochet around the entire neck edge. And here is the completed front edge and collar, and I think I really achieved that soft rounded corner I was going for. And I hope you really love your cardigan as much as I do. If you need a little extra help, I usually post my patterns on my website at fastkittycrochet.com. And I'll see you again soon with another fun project.